Hey everyone, my name is Carlyle Russell and I am the lead content creator and social media strategist here at Charlotte's Web and I am with our chief science officer today to talk to you a little bit about functional mushrooms. So I'm going to let him introduce himself and tell you a little bit more about why he loves Charlotte's Web and why he loves functional mushrooms. Thanks. Um, so I'm Marcel Von Miller. Um, my background is I've been doing um, botanical science, mostly cannabinoid related, but more recently into mushrooms and other botanical work um, over the past 22 years or so. I've been in Charlotte's Web for uh, about a year and a half, a little over a year and a half um, as chief scientific officer here. And so my job and my role is to help develop all the cool products that we have and understand the research behind them and um, yeah, make sure that they deliver on our promise. Um, for these cool effects. Cool, so the first question we have today is about functional mushrooms. So can you tell us a little bit about what functional mushrooms are and why they're making a splash in the wellness world? Yeah, absolutely. So functional mushrooms, right, like important to sort of differentiate um, psychedelic mushrooms from functional mushrooms mm -hmm. to start. Um, so psychedelic mushrooms like psilocybin and things like that, that's not what we're talking about, right? We're talking about functional mushrooms which can include everything from like lion's mane, reishi, um, cordyceps, um, turkey tail, you've probably heard of these different things, shiitake, things that you cook with, all can fall under this functional mushroom space. And really these are considered adaptogens. Um, and the reason for that is they kind of, they help sort of reduce stress, modulate your body, um, and sort of, yeah, put you on an even keel, I would say. That's amazing, that's great. So you mentioned a few different functional mushrooms. Can you tell us about what some of your favorites are and what their primary benefits are? Sure. So it's hard to pick a favorite among these, right? It's there's they each have their role in, in pretty interesting ways. Um, lion's mane is sort of like I, I find kind of like a, a keystone to it all. Lion's mane is one where there's been a, a bit of research that's really showed its improvement for you know cognitive issues, um, both in terms of identifying you know taking people that have some cognitive issues and seeing if they can kind of improve them over time, if that makes sense as well as just you know, normal, healthy individuals that don't have cognitive issues to begin with, seeing if it can improve their cognitive performance. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty, pretty neat stuff. Cordyceps is another one that um, is really interesting, and there, there are two main types of cordyceps. There's cordyceps militaris and cordyceps senescus. And there's a long history of research behind cordyceps senescus, but really showing that it improves athletic performance, and, and people have been using it. Even the Olympic Games is kind of where it started to get popularity as some um, folks in the Olympics from a couple decades ago were using and, and attributing their success to using cordyceps senescus. Too, there's some sort of like cool, you know, interesting ones like shiitake. Shiitake you think of as like cooking, right? Or shiitake mushrooms in a dish or something like that. But but they're also quite functional. But again, it's super interesting, right? You just they all have very different benefits, and it's pretty cool the research that's been done on each of them and, and where it's gone. Yeah, I had no idea that mushrooms had such a a varied amount of benefits. Yeah. That's really fascinating. <laughs> um, let's take a little bit of a veer away. Sure. So one question I've seen pop up a lot on the internet is asking about the fruiting body of the mushroom versus the mycelium of the mushroom. Yeah. And there's a lot of information that says that mycelium is actually not beneficial at all. So can you tell me a little bit about fruiting bodies and mycelium and what they actually are when sure. it comes to functional mushrooms? Yeah, happy to. So um, they all are, are very important. And, and have their different role, but there's not a bad or a good here. Yeah. They all have important parts, um, important ingredients and benefits. Um, so really when we're talking about fruiting body and mycelium, one way to think about it is mycelium are kind of like the roots, if you will, and the fruiting body is kind of like the flower, um, is one way to think about it, or the fruit or whatever else. Wow. But they all have, again, they have benefits and and um, and there isn't a good or a bad. It's good to know, dispelling a lot of misinformation. Yeah, on for, the sure. Internet, so for sure. Great. Everybody's like, oh, I've just got fruiting bodies and yeah. mine's the best and yours sucks because it's mycelium. It's like, no. Not quite. Not yeah. Quite. yeah. <laughs> That's really helpful. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I could sit here and talk to you all day about mushrooms, I think, but if our audience wanted to learn more about functional mushrooms, where could they go to do that? Yeah, I mean, we put together some great materials at Charlotte's Web. Um, so we've got blog posts and others, things that we're adding as the days go by. You're doing a lot of great work on putting this material online. So definitely one source, and there, there are the others as well. But yeah, come to Charlotte's Web and, and learn more. Love that. That's great. Well, thank you guys so much for watching, for being with me and Dr. Marcel today. So we hope to chat with you again soon. Thanks so much. 
See ya.